This is so much more than lifting weights. Welcome to our podcast and today we're going to be celebrating the Gymshark Power Collection. I'm sat amongst these awesome women and today we're going to be chatting about what lifting really means to them. I'm Sam, I'm going to be your host. I'm Gymshark Lifting Club Manager and also a CrossFit athlete myself. I'm going to get back to competing this year. So this is a really cool experience for me to kind of tap into their knowledge, hear about their experiences. So I hope you enjoy it. So for me, I always say strong body, strong mind. My whole ethos is empowering women yeah. to want to lift. Especially as like a Muslim woman and wearing a scarf, I feel like walking up to a deadlift platform where it's so open and like everyone can see you, it's such a bold statement to make and I was terrified. You know some people, before they lift, they do that little tingly dance and all that type of stuff. <laughs> and I was there and I was like, Rrr! This is lifting. So first of all, we're going to start with Lucy. If you could introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your journey, how you got into lifting and what it means to you. Of course. So my name is Lucy Davis, 24 years old, young, <laughs> from Manchester. I'm an online personal trainer and also owner of the My Coach School, which is our online subscription soon to be app. Also a health and fitness influencer and YouTuber. I feel like the title of that is so young. It's a mouthful. <laughs> so long, but you've got to get everything out. So I feel like my journey to lifting isn't as such conventional because I started off as a swimmer. So I used to swim for GB and I did it most of my life. And I say most of my life because when I first started training, I was literally... I think competitively I was seven, mm -hmm. so where you start competing and everything like that. And I was always such a sporty kid, so it was always very natural for me to go into a sport kind of like as not professionally from such a young age, but knowing that I was going to do that. Mm -hmm. So I started swimming really young, and by the time I was like 14, I was doing like my morning sessions, training nine times a week, started actually competing for GB because you do start quite young in terms of like European juniors, competitive sports, British champs. So for me, I was always super sporty, very athletic, loved it. It was very much so my passion. So from the ages of like 14 to 18, that's what I did. And that was just swimming. We did a little bit of lifting, but it was more so s &C. So applying things from the pool, how you can dive better and how you can do things like that. And then it got to the stage where I was 18 and I was very much so not in love with the sport anymore. Mm. Like the training, I didn't enjoy. I just, I hated competing. It started to make me very, very anxious. And I already suffered with anxiety and I didn't know back then. Mm. I used to like dread going to competitions. So I just, I literally, after British Champs, I came sixth in the final. If I came fourth, I could have gone to the Olympics. But it was just like, it was so intense. I was like, it's time for me to just just stop now and just move on to something else. So I stopped swimming when I was 18, I'm now 24. I naturally went into the gym because I'd already been so sporty. I was like, oh, I kind of need to keep this up in, in like some sort of level. However, I really struggled with my eating. So the reason behind my lifting and getting strong and putting weight on was because of an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. So I, when I was 18, I quit swimming. I was not training nine times a week in the pool. You come out of the swimming bubble. I went straight to uni. I left home. I had knee surgery. Everything was just kind of like all over the show. I found the gym, but kind of not in the way, not in like a positive way. I was using exercise as burning calories, punishment, mm -hmm. fasted cardio, not really sure what I was doing. And 18, 19, 20, I was bulimic for three years. But the first year was the worst. Like the first year of uni, I didn't really know what the hell was going on and why I was doing this. And I do know it was from swimming because I've been weighed since I was 14. I've had my body fats measured since I was 14. Like we were weighed before and after every session. And it was just, I was kind of like brought up to be skinny and that kind of thing. So when I started lifting, I was still trying to do nine sessions, like in the gym, which isn't healthy and I don't recommend. That's what you were used to. <laughs> That's right? what I was used to. Cause I was like replicating how much like calories I was burning and energy I was expending. And I was like, cool, okay. But then obviously I realized it wasn't helping my eating disorder at all. And I knew how to lift 
because we were taught with swimming, we, we were taught how to squat properly and with our S and C coach in proper form. However, the way that I was treating lifting wasn't correct mm -hmm. and I was just doing it. So first year of uni was a bit all over the place. And then I was like, okay, you've got to do something. I was very, very underweight. I'm talking, she was tiny. Yeah. And I just really started to struggle. So I got my PT qualifications, started going down that route. I started posting on Instagram as just like, I'll be accountable to that. Cause like Instagram, like four years ago, why like, wasn't as such like influencers. It was so wasn't different, really, right? It was so different. <laughs> you don't well, expect it to happen. Um, but I just started posting like, like propping my phone up on the floor and yeah. like film myself and just seeing how, how I was getting on. And that started to grow and people started to take interest in it. I then had like my PT qualifications. I knew what the hell I was doing. I was like, you're actually really good at this. Like this is actually, you're so passionate about it. You always have been. Let's just like follow this through. And then four years later, is it four years later? Nice. Here I am. So I feel like my journey's been very kind of like, it, like I said from the start, it wasn't conventional. Mm -hmm. I had an eating disorder. For me to get over it, I got into lifting. That was literally how I came out of it and on like the other end and on the better side of it. Did you feel that you couldn't progress with your lifting because you were, you were doing too much of it or you weren't eating, let's say like potentially healthy for your body? Yeah. You're like, something needs to change for me to be able to progress in my lifting. Yeah. And then massively. it almost helped you in a way. Yeah, yeah, massively. Like I was, I think I was like 55 kilograms and I was training nine times a week and I was in the gym and I was lifting weights and I was like, God, you've no energy, Lucy. Like you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like 64 kilograms and I'm strong yeah. and I feel so comfortable around food because I feel like lifting and like nutrition kind of, they're also intertwined. Mm -hmm. You've got to fuel your body to be able to lift. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to get it all, <laughs> you've got to yeah. get it all right. <laughs> so it did take me quite a while to get over what I was going through. And I, I kind of did it on my own as well because I was too ashamed to tell people. Mm. And I do regret that now because when I share my story, I'm like, if you're, if you're struggling, speak up. It's not embarrassing to talk about. That I feel like there was such a stigma behind like, especially eating disorders. There still is a little bit, mm -hmm. but like you're going back four years, you don't speak about it and it wasn't spoken about. So no, it was very different. It was it? very was no different. Could kind of help you or talk to you about it. You didn't it. know what to mm. say to anyone. You, you didn't want people to think you were like making it up or I don't know. You didn't want to take that attention away and, and bring it on yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously great that a lot more people do talk about it now. I talk about it really openly and I feel like it helps quite a lot of people. Yeah, I love that. That's a really good, nice introduction, but we'll definitely come back to a few bits. Yeah, you, in there, I, feel like I said, be... I was like, you could have me for like half an hour. There were some really nice tips that you can help girls out there. So like, how would you know if you were training too much and you weren't eating enough for your body, et cetera, and how that felt for you? But we'll come back to all of that because I feel like we could all touch on that as well. So we have Wiley. Can you introduce yourself, please? <laughs> so I'm Wiley Can Lift and mm -hmm. I'm a hybrid athlete. Um, and I've been lifting probably about six years. Um, but before that, rewind, I was, uh, I used to play football. That's my first ever sport. Um, got older brothers, so obviously, I like how you get into it. <laughs> what team do you support? <laughs> Actually, I don't support football now, but okay. like half my family support Liverpool and Manchester, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, and then after that, it was athletics, um, mainly. Um, I competed in 100 metres and I was doing kickboxing as well. So like you, Lucy, I was that kid who just, did all the sports competing at a very young age. Um, so the foundation was like very much embedded in me. Mm. Um, and then I also do a lot of spoken word and I was in the theatre scene and I was at drama school. So like the sports kind of took like a side seat because I've been competing for so long, training for so long. I like just, yeah, just lost a bit of passion for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then how I got into lifting and going to personal training is because I was working at a retail job. That typical trying to be an actress, <laughs> having a retail job, going to drama school. And I was like, this job is not for me. And I just one day just walked out and I was like, what am I going to do? And then I was at home and I would love to say that that day I like booked a PT course. Like, yeah, I'm going to do this and become a PT. And it, it doesn't happen like that. It didn't happen like that. It was a good six months on. Um, and I was just at home, not feeling the best. And the only thing I did was go to the gym, come home and um, 
true story. I was watching <laughs> the, the Commonwealth Games with um, Zoe Smith and Michaela Breeze battling it out, um, Olympic lifting, and I was just like, what? She's black and she's come out of retirement, eh? This can, this can be a thing. Yeah. Um, so then it put the idea of Olympic lifting in my head. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I became a personal trainer, I was just doing normal bodybuilding training and doing like, the things I used to do before, like the athletic side. And then um, someone literally came up to me at the gym and was like, you're like, pretty solid, like you're, you're really strong, you should try like you powerlifting. <laughs> yeah, you should try powerlifting. And I was like, meh. And then I was like, bat squatting 100 kg, like it was nothing, like self-taught. So I was like, okay, cool. So I went and got a coach and that was it. That's how it started. Right. Um, six years later um, in the game, uh, I've like competed at English Championships, British Championships, international and powerlifting. And then three years ago, I introduced Olympic lifting where I've gone to two English Championships and medaled. So yeah, it's just like the start. But I went into lifting because it was a sense of like strength, control, mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to feel strong. The time I walked out of my retail job, I went through a bit of trauma. And, um, you know, you, as a woman, I think when you go through certain trauma, it's just like, you feel weak and you're like, this is not appealing. How am I gonna feel better? Yeah. And I always say to people, it's hard to work on a mind straight away. So for me, yeah. I always say strong body, strong mind. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's where, I, where I started. Mm -hmm. um, Saying that, it can catch up with you if you're just going to be working on your body. Like Lucy said, like, you know, I wish there was a time I reached out for help and spoke to someone sooner. But it's like, now nah, if I just smash it in the gym, smash it in these comps, everything's going to go Keep well. More weight, it will, it will more just go on, add more weight. weight. <laughs> like, you know, you're covering up everything just by PB, yeah. PB. Uh, and then, um, yeah, you stop realization. Mm -hmm. That's how you get injured. And that's how. Mm -hmm. So like, um, yeah, one thing I definitely started applying to myself is what I do to my clients, because I'm a strength and conditioning coach as well, mm -hmm. was while you're working on your body, like work on your mind as yeah. well, and try not to ignore things and use the gym as an escape route. Like obviously you want to use mm -hmm. it as a stress release, but it shouldn't be your main release yeah I think it's really interesting you said you went into competing and I bet people around you were like oh my gosh like you're so amazing at this keep going right. keep doing it and you probably felt it the same and same girls when we get on to you like keep doing that keep pushing do that next competition and you're using the lifting to make you feel good right and then people are now saying you're doing really well at it that it pushes you to do even more when actually you haven't dealt with this mm -hmm. yeah but you're now just using that so it's it's totally true it's like what you a, said like work on your mind as yeah. well as your body like consistently it's that mm -hmm. ticking time bomb mm. yeah like it's gonna it's everything's gonna <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, they gonna break <laughs> you're yeah. getting injury and it's, it's like gonna, oh what yeah. do i do now <laughs> lifting literally, was helping me yeah, yeah. <laughs> last year like, i suffered two injuries um and then when I got the second one, I was like, this is an internal thing. Yeah. Like, it's time to sort this out. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to, I, well, I thought I was doing everything to prevent it physically, but emotionally and mentally, I wasn't. Um, but yeah, but lifting's amazing. It makes you learn so much about yourself mm -hmm. inside, outside. Yeah, Val, love that one. We'll de again, we'll come back to loads of things on there. Okay, Val, can you do the same? Give us an intro and tell us what lifting means to you. My name is Valerie. I am 22 years old. I'm currently a personal trainer in London and I've been doing online classes as of, you know, the whole COVID lockdown thing. And um, I would say for me, similar to Lucy, I've always, always done sport and I've also equally done like the drama and the theatrical thing as well. And um, when I was in school and I was around about, how old was I? Around about year 10, year 11, we had to make the decision in our school, you couldn't do both drama or PE, physical education, you had to pick one or the other. And I went down the route of PE because there was less paperwork. That was a deci deciding factor. I was like, it's got less paperwork, I'm doing that one. Um, and when I was in school, um, I went to a girls' school and I feel like the area that I was in, there wasn't much opportunity with regards to sport. I just felt like in the area I was in, girls were, you know, like, told to be like nurses and all that kind of stuff and I had loads of conversations with my PE teacher and I was like you know what I really like this sports thing I really like exercising so she you know 
did it out of her own hand to come in and have different sort of external coaches come in to teach us different types of sports. Um, and through that, we had to, we had like a netball coach externally, we had a basketball coach. And when that basketball coach came in, it just clicked and it was like, I want to do this. And it didn't settle into my head how short I was for the, for the sport. <laughs> and a lot of people were like, basketball? And honestly, like, people laugh at me when I tell them, I used to play basketball professionally. And they're like, okay, but you're like four foot 11. Yes, but a, like, so how fast I am. Listen, I did it, I did it, I did it. And it wasn't a thing to me. And um, so I played basketball for a bit. And in the basketball, we did a lot of strength and conditioning. We also got introduced into the gym through basketball as well. And it was just, the things that basketball taught me from very early on was the whole communal vibes and it was the whole, you know, working out together to improve both inside and out. And our coach, um, he was from Jamaica, but he had like a really, really deep American accent as well. And he just came with like these life lessons. So we'd be training and he'd be like, girls, the only things I want to hear from you was book some basketball, <laughs> get down and do this. And it was just like, it was that place that you'd go to, which made things a little bit easier. You'd have school troubles, you know, you'd go home, you might have issues there but when you'd go to basketball, it was that nice release and that physical release and the emotional one because our coaches were people we could really speak to. It was like the family member that you feel so comfortable talking yeah. to. So even when I left basketball, I'd often communicate with them. Um, I left basketball because there was no progression for and over 16s and the only other option was to go and to play for the um, opposing team but we were like arch enemies and if you did that it was a bit like are you really gonna go and do that so that's when I fell into the gym because it's like okay I'm not gonna go play for that team all the other teams are so far away and um, I went into college and continued to study sports and that's when the gym kicked in it would be college and then you'd pop into the gym we'd had the discount because we were in like college students mm -hmm. go with my friend and then we'd work out but I was always the person kind of leading the workout keep doing it keep going so the PTs would be like I used to talk like I knew it all, put my hands up, yeah, today we're just going to do some cardio, yeah, we're just going to do some burpees. We'll do things. like loads of reps. <laughs> we're going to make our, our cardiovascular system. And you used to like talk to the PTs as if you were on their level sort of thing. And you could tell they enjoyed engaging with me, which made me feel like I want to go back there again sort of thing. And then it became a thing of whenever I went in, I'd speak to a PT and they'd be like, actually, let me take you through this thing. Let me show you how to do this. Let me show you how to do that. Then before I knew it, my friends wouldn't even need to be there because I'm going in and I'm, I know what I've pieced together a workout because of what they've taught me. Um, I finished college. I also started teaching because of college. I started teaching PE in schools. So I was teaching kids and I was like, I thought that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach sports to younger kids. And I was pretty young when I was doing that. I was 18 teaching kids and I thought yep I'm going to be a PE teacher that's set I like this and then I just thought to myself those life lessons that coach taught me I can't do it to the year threes right now and I want to be able to you know speak to someone on that level that coach would speak to me and then I was going to this one specific gym and I think this is what made me a personal trainer I was in this gym I loved the class it was called hit 360 and there was two 30 minute classes I used to do both of them and the PT used to be like really really like these classes don't you it's like yeah I do and then give me a job call me literally <laughs> I was I was there tactically thinking well I mean if you get qualified and what he'd do he was a crossfitter himself so he'd pull me to the side and he was like you've got a lot of energy try doing this he, mm. this is a clean and press this is a this and this is a that slowly before I knew it he was coaching me to be his mini little crossfitter <laughs> And that's when I started training properly because I'd go in. That's what we do. Is, is, is it? Is it? Is that what you guys yeah, do? You it's just, like one day they'll do this. You're a young one. Yeah, yeah like in. all the girls at Gymshark have no idea. Their classes they do, I'm like, mm, maybe <laughs> one day we'll make a team. And that is, I mean, we got a team here. And looking back on it, now I'm realising you literally would stand there and be like, mm. <laughs> Can do this. Let me see if you can do that. Can you do and a backflip? Slowly, before, he was like, "You know what? I can see you enjoy this sort of thing. Get yourself qualified because you know you're young enough. Like you've got the whole world to. It doesn't kill you to get yourself qualified, sort of thing." And he got qualified and just jumped straight into being a personal trainer. And um, through being a personal trainer and doing the lifting and stuff, there was always this feeling of you need to be extremely skinny. I don't even know where it came from, the feeling of you need to be tiny. And the fact that people would call me things like pocket rocket, I thought I had to fit that picture of being yeah, extremely like, what small. Does a but what pocket rocket look to like? To me, <laughs> my definition of a pocket rocket would be something that's extremely small but has lots of energy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got the energy, but I'm not that small. I could be, I'd pull skin and be like, this is fat, this is fat. 
And they'd be like, no, it's not. But then similar to you, Lucy, I was doing so much and not eating enough at all. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where I was having multiple health issues and I just was so tiny. I'm currently 60 kg. And at the time when I was doing the most, I was like 45. I was like mm -hmm. really low in weight. I had so many things going on with me. And I'd literally in a day, where I was personal training, I'd be teaching two 30 minute classes, I'd be doing the most, running up and down the stairs because we had like three floors yeah. and all I'd eat in a day would be like a banana and a croissant sort and of thing. It's cool, time. it's got sugar in it, it's got <laughs> sugar in it. Yeah, I'm good to go, I'm good to yeah. go, good to go. And then when I started having the health issues, you know, things didn't quite work right, that's when I was like, wait, that's when me being holistic really kicked in. And I was like, okay, you need to eat. And there's no such thing as you need to be too skinny. It's what's healthy for you sort of thing. And that's where I'm at now. So. I'm happy with the weight that I am. And when it comes to training, as I was speaking to you guys before, I really do want to get into something more specific and I do want to maybe compete or, you know, say that I've done this because I think throughout everything I've done, I've treaded lightly and I've just dibbled and dabbled. There's been people that will come up and like, you should compete, like physique comp competition because you look this way or you should do this because you do this. And it's so many things coming in and it's like, wait, wait, I need to be skinnier for that or oh, I need to gain more, I need to lift more for that. And it was also confusing, so I never did anything. But now I feel like I'm so sure of myself that I want to step in and actually do something. And I think what lifting for me has been, has just been a space in which like you can just offload and you yeah. can freestyle and be yourself and also like succeed in a way that's very personal to you yeah you can almost like slow down with it as exactly well, can't you like it's not rushed all the time it's not like you're running to get somewhere it's you got to take your time you got to think about your form and your mm -hmm. technique which can give you that time to go or oh, like that style of lifting or exactly. I'll try a different right. style of yeah. lifting etc and that's what I've enjoyed yeah. as well because up until this point I would say serious lifting it's been two years but I've been in the gym in and out ever since I was like, let's say 15, 16, and there's been no pressure of you need to do this or you need to lift it. It's just what I make it to be. So yeah. if I want to do something, I can, which is what has been really amazing with lifting. It's like, lift the weight, don't lift the weight. Nobody's bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really nice what you just said there as well, where it's, there is no specific way that you mm -hmm. need to be. And I think with lifting as well, like, there is no specific style that you have to do. It's like, just try little bits and you might yeah, enjoy sure. the way that Lucy trains, you might enjoy the way that Maymar trains, you might enjoy that I do. And that's totally fine, isn't it? It's, you know, there's no, that person's better than right. that person because they do it in a certain way. I think that's a really nice thing that you just mm -hmm. said that. And a real nice tip for everyone listening as well, but it's, you it's know. what you just, make it to be. Yeah, make, make it how it you want to make it. As long as your form's right. <laughs> check that form of technique. <laughs> Mayma, can you introduce yourself? Sure, my name's Mayma, I'm 22 from Leeds. Um, I actually work full time as a therapeutic radiographer, so I'm not really based in the whole sports and PT kind of field, but um, I've fallen in love with fitness um, over the past couple of years. Um, so for me, my fitness journey, is, it was mainly based about weight gain because growing up, going through high school and things, I used to love PE and the competitiveness of team sports. And they used to have like lunchtime clubs and things like that and after school, but my, I didn't really have any self-confidence to go and do that by myself. It was more like, oh, can you come with me? Or, you know, I wanted someone like a friend to be there with me, but they were all like, no, why would you want to do that? So I felt kind of discouraged by that and I kind of just internalised it. Um, and all my life I've been quite like academic um, anyway, all through sixth form and um, uni as well. But in the gap between sixth form and starting uni, I was just so bored and I kind of just let go of having to rely on someone else to have the confidence to go. And I just started going by myself. Um, and all throughout... I just was like, I'll <laughs> do like, this, girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was tired of like trying to ask people, encourage other people to come with me because they always say, no, why would you want to do that? Um, and I feel like I kind of bought into the idea as well, like, oh, why would you want to go to the gym for? Like, you're such a weirdo when you can do other things. Um, so I just went myself and it was, at first it was just to try and gain some weight because I've always been quite skinny growing up. Um, and because I'm tall as well, I feel like it's harder for me to put weight on. I remember at my lowest weight, I was probably about five or six stone. Um, so I was really, really thin and I wanted to gain muscle. Um, so I started off going by myself. I bought like a little fitness plan as well to try and give me some framework because I suffer a lot with anxiety. So walking into a gym with no plan would have absolutely terrified me. Um, so I had like some sort of framework so I knew what I was doing. 
Um, but I didn't actually start deadlifting for about a couple months into going to the gym because I was so scared. Especially as like a Muslim woman and wearing a scarf, I feel like walking up to a deadlift platform where it's so open and like everyone can see you, it's such a bold statement to make and I was terrified. Um, especially as I wasn't really that strong starting out in the first place. Um, so I tried to like build myself a foundation of strength first before I got into it. Um, and starting off, it was rather embarrassing looking back at it you know with like dodgy form and you know like hitching the weight up and stuff but I feel like that's got to happen for you to be able to reflect on it and learn on it um, and since then you know I've started eating more I've got a much more um, of a healthier relationship with food I don't limit myself anymore I don't think oh that's got too many calories or you know I don't want to like avoid certain groups of foods either like carbs are my best friend I love pasta <laughs> <laughs> pasta is bread like, toast potatoes everything yeah. <laughs> give me it all um, so that's that's really like changed my outlook on food too um, and through uni I started going to the gym and I feel like it's become an escape a form of escapism for me um, like a break from all the academic work and from all the pressures of being at work because um, through uni as well we had to do like um, a placement so we we're in the hospital and then outside of the hospital obviously still had uni work to do so there was really no time for myself yeah. and I feel like because I didn't really have a hobby this was my my thing um, and because I'm like always around people as well I don't really have time to myself mm -hmm. um, so taking like two three hour breaks going to the gym headphones on world off just lifting just me and the platform and my numbers to do it's just it's just silence in my in my head and it's just my time to just get the work done um, and I feel like the more I've gone, the more confident I've got, the more other people that I've inspired as well, like through Instagram. Because I only did it like for fun when I started out, to just document my journey, because I wanted to know how far I could take it. Um, and to be at the point where I am now, I would have never imagined it in the first place. Um, and like to be pulling the numbers that I am now and people saying, you know, how do you even do that? And because I feel like women have got this misconception of them already, that you can't, you're not capable, you're not going to be as strong as other men, um, you're not going to be able to deadlift. So when I'm like at the platform asking other people if they're using the 20 plates and they're looking at me like, what do you need them for? Like, <laughs> no, like, I've like, had lift more than I need four. Four. <laughs> so, no, I got um, Yeah, I'm going to need four of them, please. <laughs> you know, and just like loading up, the, loading up the bar and doing it with good form, good practice. It's just so, it's just so rewarding mentally yeah. and, and like physically as well. And to see that progress from when you first started out to where you are now, I feel like I've just gained so much confidence and it's hard to remember. Um, that I, there was a time where I was terrified of being in that place and I was so scared of the people around me. Um, I remember once my headphones died during a session and I was just so self-conscious and so anxious. Um, that it was just one of the worst sessions I ever had. Um, and I feel like starting out as well, I had a really high level of self-expectation. Mm -hmm. um, so I expected way too much of myself. Like I thought I was going to be pushing higher numbers. I'd be really upset if I had a bad lifting session or if I didn't get all the reps. But now I just like, my whole mindset has shifted because it's more for enjoyment and a personal sense of achievement. I feel, I, I don't feel anything if I've got a bad session. It's just something for me to work, work upon. So yeah. Thank you very much, Mayma. Thanks, girls, for telling us all about your journeys. So I think we should uh, start having a bit of fun and start talking about lifting and just keep it specific to that. <laughs> so I think well, I'd love to start off with some best and worst moments when it comes to lifting. OK, so first of all, I want you to all think of like your best moment. Maybe it was that lift that you've always been trying to shoot for or you'd learned how to do a movement and it felt really great. Um, and then we'll go into our worst. So we'll start with best. Lucy, you're going to go first. <laughs> so I feel like mine will be quite different just because I don't compete in lifting. Yeah. I mean, I love hitting PBs. It's <laughs> freaking great, isn't it? You just feel What's fab. What's your favourite lift? Hit thrust. We'll do that. Okay, I know, I'm a, that. maybe a bit controversial there because it's a bit of a new lift, isn't it? But no, I do, uh, do love a hit thrust. But I feel like my best lifting moments was when and I can remember it so vividly. It was like the week where I was completely coming out my eating disorder. And when I was going into those sessions, I just felt so good. I felt relieved. Mm -hmm. So that whole week, and I can remember it, it was at uni. And I would go in, I'd be so confident. I had no gym anxiety. I wasn't worried about the food I'd had. So it wasn't specifically like I, I hit a lift. Mm -hmm. It was that week where I was coming out of an eating disorder. 
And I was like, this is what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah. This is how good it is supposed to make you feel. So that for me, like, is 100% the best. Did you feel like, I belong here? This oh is my, my belonging. God. This is where I am. I love it. And I feel healthy. I feel strong. Yeah, massively. And I'm very for, like, my whole ethos is empowering women yeah. to want to lift mm -hmm. and to not be scared about picking up some iron in the gym. And it's not a place just for guys. I mean, I'm very big on it. I get very yeah. passionate when Same. someone says, <laughs> I can see the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the fire? I oh, know girls can't lift. I'm like, um, hello. Right then. Come on, then. Hello. Come on then. Let's go. <laughs> you and me. But no, it's, I'm, I'm very, very strong on empowering women and wanting them to feel comfortable mm -hmm. and that they are allowed to be there. Like, it's a massive, massive thing for me. And it's the best feeling when they get it as well. Like if you're working with clients or with friends and they get it and sure. they understand it and they're like, oh my God, that was like the best session this ever. I why. love that. This like, that's why you, you do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Thanks, Luce and Wiley. Actually, tell us your favorite lift and your best moment. Okay, so favorite <laughs> lift. Do you know what? It depends how the lifts are going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in your cycle. Um, actually, my favorite lift, it will always be the squat. Um, I used to be called Wiley Can Squat at first. Love um, it. Actually, when did the name change then? The name changed when Ollie Lifting came in and I was like, oh, I do more than squat change now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, squat, yeah, it's, it's got a special place in my heart. I've hit some big numbers with squat and it's just, it's the foundation of all lifts, I think. Yeah. Um, and the best moment is actually recently, if you asked me this a year ago, I would have said something completely different. Um, I hit a... Uh, I think it was about four weeks ago for the first time after post both injuries, legs still coming back, I got back on an 80 kg snatch. And it was just that, it was, I know. <laughs> I can snatch the bar. Say. And so. that's a bit wonky. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been talking about this all blooming day, but I went on Instagram the other week and um, you're literally in your living room snatching 55 kilos. And she's like, yeah, this is just lightweight, don't worry, guys. And I was just like, right, okay, well, I'm going to have to hit those lifts now because you're doing it in your living room and I actually have a gym at home. I'm doing this. Stop using the excuses yeah. that I'm not in a gym. Yeah, maybe it's just more fear of my TV. But, <laughs> but yeah, like, I didn't realise, like, I've been lifting for so long and then for it to all be taken away from you from two injuries... And then I've done a 360 of coming back and then the first time I've hit it three times now since and one, one oh. was in the shoot. And I can remember the, like the first time I ever hit like an 80 snatch and then I went on to 85, 90. I, I, I never really appreciated it. I realised how I was like kind of just ticking numbers. Mm. And then when I got back a year later after injury and to like just, it was like, the best 80 I could have done in that moment as well. And I just stood up with it and I was just like, this mm. is why I do it. Yeah. Mm. And we forget that lifting is a journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's definitely been a journey. And it's like, you might get knocked down, but if you've got it in, you just stand back up and keep going. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was literally four weeks ago. And now I'm just like buzzing to see like what's next and where to go. That. I'm excited to see what I'm excited <laughs> to see. This time should be like 120. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, Val, your favourite lift and your best moment. Um, I would say my favourite lift would be a deadlift, mm -hmm. just because I don't know. Like ever since I've started lifting, the the de there's something about me and deadlifting. It's just <laughs> there's just the it's, connection. There's a relationship. Uh, uh, I tried to translate that love into squats, and I did for a bit, but the deadlift just took me right back. Um, and I would say my favorite and my best lifting moment would be, it was like a week, and I don't know what happened, but I don't, I don't know if it was a balance of emotionally feeling really well, eating really good, and just like, in just the greatest alignment that there was, but the, the whole Nature week was I was in the just, right alignment. The whole <laughs> week, and I'll never forget that week, I was smashing numbers, I was lifting things with ease, and that's when I hit like all my PBs and all that type of stuff. And I remember the deadlift session as well, um, I because I worked in a gym, so there was a point when it was completely quiet, you could switch up the music and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And I was training with just like two other people, put on the music, and I did that, you know? You know some people, before they lift, they do that little tingly dance and all that type of stuff. <laughs> and I was there and I was like, <laughs> you Do you have a dance before you lift? The powerlifting dance. You, I feel like everyone does that. Every powerlifting dance. It's that little... We've got a little twist that of foot. One. A little twist of foot, twist. yeah. There you you go. have a dance. You have there a dance you go. or a routine. I like, yeah, I, I do some weird things. My, my tongue comes out. <laughs> yeah, we've seen yeah, that. I don't know if anyone else has seen <laughs> yeah. that. Like, yeah, we've seen that. <laughs>
I get like a weird like thing in my yeah, leg before and it's a, little, a flick. And you feel like you're <laughs> on the floor already, just make sure I am. And that's all I was there. And I picked it up and how much was it? It was like 140 kg. And at the time I weighed like 56 kg. Mm. And I was like, well, as I picked it up and I was like, I was looking at everyone, I was like. <laughs> and I held it and I was like. And I put it down. <laughs> and I, I didn't even so drop it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, mm. And I think the next day I came in, I was doing pull-ups and then I put on a belt out of nowhere. I've never done pull-ups with a belt before. And I put like a little 5kg. I was like, I'm getting up. Put on a 10kg. I was like, put on 15kg. And I did like two and I was like, Ooh. and I was looking at everyone. And I was like, I just did that. Just, <laughs> everybody watch. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I've got it. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my God, something's happening this week. And I think that was the best week. It was just, I think maybe because I was in that zone and feeling that way that things were just flowing. But that there, just feeling like, you know what, I can achieve. But equally, when I haven't, you know, lifted something and stuff like that, it still feels the same. It's a bit like, okay, okay, I'll come back. I'll come back. You're good. But that week was amazing. And I'll never forget it, ever. <laughs> in the same one. Favourite lift and best moment? My favourite lift is always going to be deadlift. Yeah. Always. I feel like it's like the alpha of all lifts. Yeah. Like it's just, it's just so cool. Like the set up, being on the platform, it's just <laughs> something about it. Like the adrenaline rush. Um, and one of my favourite lifts, I was running 110 that week. Um, and the previous week I'd failed it for the sets that I needed to do. And the next week, I don't know what happened, but they moved like clockwork. It was like butter. And I was like, what has changed <laughs> from that, the like, previous week? It. <laughs> I, managed, it I managed to get out like a whole nother set. And I was like, what has changed? Like, this is so easy. What's next? Can I do more? I was like, this is really, it shows you like you can't put a limit on yourself to what you can do because you never know what's happening inside. Like, you don't know what factors have affected you that one session, but when everything falls into place, it's incredible what you can do and like you can really unleash your own potential on the platform when you know you're smashing your macros you're training hard um you're sleeping well because there's so many different factors and once you've all you've got them boxed off it's incredible the feeling as well of adrenaline afterwards and you've pulled it up and it's like have i even like is it even up like that's so when you quickly check the bar you quickly check the bar and you're like is that, is that a 20 yeah, bar yeah you go back <laughs> and you <laughs> <see>. <laughs> when I pick I something that. up I, and I'm surprised I'm looking at me like that's 20 <laughs> yeah <laughs> like <laughs> mentally like, what, this? Yeah. 15 or 20 <laughs> kilos <laughs> <laughs> or it's a rewind, what did I do last night? What did I do this morning? I yeah. need to repeat that. You're trying to replicate <laughs> it for another session. That I week, I, w I got so cocky with it. When I did that deadlift, I called one of my colleagues. I said, just double check what number that is. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, oh, OK. Yeah, cool. Just recorded it on that camera and that camera there. Just saying. Just saying. I love That's that awesome. feeling. I, I think like that. also like best moments are kind of, I mean, if you've obviously you've had injuries, Lisa, I'm guessing you might have had a couple of injuries and girls, is that feeling of, okay, I've had an injury and I've come back, but I've actually had to strip the weight away. Mm. Um, I think we've all like focused a lot on when you lift that heavy weight, sometimes it's not just lifting that big like one rep max or five rep max, it's I've taken the weights off and now I'm actually moving better and your mechanics right. feel mm -hmm. good. And then you can actually feel like I'm massively quad dominant. So it's like, oh my God, I found my glutes in that. <laughs> like, that's a big one for me. I'm like, whoa, I used them in that snap. <laughs> so then I also am um, just like, I just wanted to highlight that, that it's not always about lifting the heavy Literally. weights, but I do love all that. Okay, then let's go on to your worst moments of your lifts. Oh, <laughs> I feel like I've probably had quite a few yeah <laughs> like <laughs> actually yeah like which one so, but if lifting yeah. has helped you get through something like i'm very similar like it's helped me get through stuff as well um and i've had moments where i'm like i probably should not be in this room right now i should just go <laughs> yeah, i think <laughs> don't cry at the barbell <laughs> yeah literally don't cry i'm gonna get through it i think for me because i really struggle with anxiety and i still do like i had an operation two years ago on my stomach because we thought it was endometriosis, mm -hmm. but it was actually due to anxiety oh, because wow. your mind and your gut is completely yeah. related. And I was in pain for like two years prior and it ended up being because of anxiety. I was like, oh my God, I've had an operation on my stomach because <laughs> of, an, it, it's just the weirdest thing. Yeah. And I think the worst times for me was when my gym anxiety was the worst and it was when I had my eating disorder. I felt I didn't belong at all like in the gym as a woman and I 100 appreciate that guys will also feel like this I'm not saying that but I think there still is a huge stigma for women to go into the gym and feel comfortable and not feel 
like they're not supposed to be there. And just for me, again, it's never just like one worst moment. I've had a few where I've like, I've injured myself and the bar's dropped and I've torn cartilage in my knee and had surgeries. But for me, that's not the worst. They're, that's just an injury for me that's happened. The worst for me is when I've gone in, when I had that eating disorder and I just felt like I didn't belong. I felt like I, I shouldn't be there. I'm not supposed to be there. And I felt like I was being stared at constantly and the sessions were crap. Like I, I, I wasn't in the right mindset. If I'm anxious, and I still get it sometimes now, if I'm anxious and I go into a session like that, I sometimes find it really hard to get that second person out of my head thinking, you can't do this, you're not supposed to be here. And I feel like it's still something that, and I'm openly say I still struggle with it, and that's fine by me. It's just dealing with it in different ways. But those sessions back when I had my eating disorder, they were the worst. They were the, they were the tough ones, because I was doing so much. Mm. I was knackered. Like, I was doing so much in these sessions and they just were not... Completely burnt out. They were just not good at all. Yeah. At all. <laughs> Have you got any tips that we could help, like, any of our listeners on how you, like, combat your anxiety when if you're having it and you're going to the gym and you've got that little, little Lucy in your head, like, you don't belong here. Yeah. What do you do to combat that? So I think one of the biggest things why people get gym anxiety is because they think other people are looking at them. Yeah. And I always good. say... It is. It's yeah. a massive common one. I always say, I was like, the thing is, right... You go into a gym, you've got your phone, you've got your headphones, you've got a bottle of water. There's not a lot to kind of look at unless you're on the phone. Yeah. So unfortunately, you're going to end up looking at other people. And I say to them, you probably do it without realising. Yeah. You probably daydream. Someone else over there squatting catches your eye thinking you're looking at them. You're not. You've just caught someone's eye. And I just try and explain that to people saying like, no one's, no one actually gives a shit what you're doing. Yeah. They <laughs> really are so... Okay. They, they, they're there for them. They're yeah. not there for you. They don't know who you are. They're just chilling. They're doing their session. So I think understanding that people daydream and they don't yeah. just want to stare at a dumbbell is like a great <laughs> thing to say. Also having a banging playlist and having a program to follow. Mm -hmm. I think having a program to follow is like really underestimated. But yeah. if I went into a session and didn't know what I was doing, you would feel I'd that. feel like a lemon because oh, I'd be a lemon walking around the gym. Yeah. I wouldn't... Why, that, that would give you anxiety because you don't know what... what you're working on what, what's your goal for that session what's your purpose for being there so having a program having a bang and playlist and just realizing that people are more interesting to stare at their dumbbell yeah i love that they're really good tips what's your top song on your playlist do you know what it's 100 percent eminem lose yourself because it was my swimming song when i was in the call room when i swam before my finals like that was the song and it's just carried through you know it's very like still there <sighs> empowering i mean get me thinking about it now i'm like oh very emotional we should have had that playing out <laughs> all our theme tunes yeah all right then wiley can you share us your worst moment when lifting but also let's share your playlist what do you listen to when you lift song. So oh, worst moment then music it depends it depends how you're feeling but if anyone knows me j cole's my guy so Ooh, all all that. That. <laughs> love yours See, I love like house music and <laughs> yeah. all over the house. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm doing conditioning, it's like, yeah, it's something like house music, but lifts, you've got to have some heavy rap on. Um, yeah, the worst, uh, same as like, same as you, I've had some injuries and hurt myself from lifting, especially in ollie lifting. When you first start in, like, you just, like you need to learn how to move around the bar instead of mm. controlling the bar. But any, everything yeah. you want to do is control the bar. So you're like muscling it. So I've like given myself concussion, smacked it in my head, broken my hand, broken my wrist. Yeah. I still don't say that's the worst because you forget about those moments. Oh, you do. Like, that's they're why just small. Yeah. <laughs> small little bumps, literally. And you continue, you continue lifting. Otherwise, we wouldn't have done it for so long. Um, but the worst is, I reckon it was the British Championships for Olympic lifting. Everything been going well. Lifts had been going on point. The build up to it was amazing. Went in there, I was um, gold on snatches. I was like, yep, yeah, killing it. It's my first British championship. Went to warm up for cleaning jerks and then just froze. Oh. I literally looked around the room and I was like, I felt imposter, like imposter mm -hmm. syndrome. And I was like, should I even be here? Mm. And it's been a theme in my um, comps until like recently, well, when we could compete. And um, it's something I had to really work on. I went out there and then I went to go and do the clean and jerk, dropped it. Went to the second one, dropped it. Mm. The third one, yeah, just couldn't get it. And next minute, you just got red lights around you because the British Championship. So it's like yeah. quite dramatic. You've got music coming yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, like God. the X Factor. Like, looking at me. Sponsored by, sponsored by like, a famous brand. <laughs> 
lights and then like yeah so when you get a good lift obviously it's green lights and then it was just like red lights and I was just like wow like I just I need worked to do so this. hard yeah yeah and it was like when I look back and I think when I um removed myself from lifting because I couldn't lift and I was working on my mind and I realized it's imposter I genuinely felt like I hadn't done the work I didn't belong there mm. I didn't know how to lift and yeah and then you just have to like I just worked on that and now you almost just have to like meditate sense. yourself through it don't you like right. if you're just going into train it's like actually that is my meditation train yeah and it's also really interesting how um you have something in common as well that you both felt like you were an imposter in that space right. yeah, yeah, like yeah. I felt that yeah. before and like with competitions as well it's like I don't belong here I'm just an average girl like what the yeah. hell am I doing here I'm just a girl like having a bit of fun like what it's really interesting so it'll be interesting to see what you guys think about that as well but yeah, sorry, carry on. <laughs> I just jumped in on your story. <laughs> yeah, that's um, no, yeah, it's like imposter syndrome is so common and, yeah. and so and so real. And then the thing I always say is like, I am an athlete. Yeah. I have worked for this. I have put the hours, the time. Mm -hmm. I've got the medals. I've got the kit. So why am I going out there mm. feeling like I don't belong? And Do you it, think that could come from potentially the people that you look at? So you've got people following you that maybe aren't at that level of you lifting, but you're then looking at the next people. Yeah, yeah. I, I sometimes suffer with that. Like I'll look at the next CrossFit level mm. up, up and up, but I'll never look kind of, oh, like, you know, look where you have come from and yeah. look what you started, body yeah. weight squat to now doing this, to actually doing a competition. Yeah. Like that's just amazing. Well, for one thing, I don't, I never look at other people. Mm -hmm. Like I always go, I don't care what they're doing, I don't pay my rent. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I'm, I've always like solidly been like that. That's cool, but that's a good tip, girls, if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are paying your rent. <laughs> but I think for me, it just came from just past traumas I haven't like dealt with, yeah. with like my self-worth. Um, so when you haven't dealt with your self-worth and then you're achieving and doing well at something and then you catch yourself and then all what, I guess what went back to me was like that little girl who was, had no self-worth. Mm -hmm. So then you're like, you're feeling like, I'm not worthy for being here. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but yeah, you overcome and you become better. Yeah, become stronger every day. Wow. Definitely, definitely related to that last part there. Um, I would say... My worst lifting session experience would be, I think I had like a week, two summers ago, where everything just became a bit too much. I had trouble at home. It was summer, so when you're, you know, I was in a gym by where it was completely rent-based. And I was new to this space as well because I was used to like a program in which you kind of did some work and you got paid off of it. So there was always that kind of safety net, but I was in deep. My rent was like 1,500 a month sort of thing. There wasn't many clients coming in. It was in the city, everyone was on holiday. So that wasn't working, problems at home. And I'm the kind of person that I've always done this because even when I was in school and I had basketball, it would be that release and then just continue about your business. You wouldn't actually address what was really going on in your head. And it was getting so much for me and my way of dealing with it was to go into the gym every single day outfit matching i'm training this is what i'm doing this no literally 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 literally, literally, literally it would be like new set i'm wearing this this set today cool i look cute and the thing is i'd, I'd cover it up in that way i look cute i'm gonna go train i'm gonna go do this that that and the other i got my food ready i'm gonna ace this sort of thing and i was um i was training i i had got through um like two or three exercises, the music just wasn't hitting quite right. But even though it was music that I trust that will get me in the mood hey, to train. what music was it? And um, what was I listening <laughs> to? I have this one song, it's called um, By Future and it's called, um, what was it? Um, last breath mm -hmm. and it's at the beginning it sounds like trumpets at the beginning du, 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 du. <laughs> and I use it every, <laughs> every time I lift I use that song to lift because it starts you should have never doubted me yeah. and I'm like <laughs> so I'm listening to it it's not hitting I get to the point where I'm hip thrusting I sit with the bar I hip thrust like three times I stop and I just start crying I was in the gym floor and I was like, look, check her and I was like, cool. <laughs> and I was like, what's wrong? And I was looking at myself in the mirror, like, why are you crying in the gym? <laughs> <laughs> I think like, we've all had it. We've all done that. Right. Yeah. 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 Maybe have you cried, cried in the gym? Yeah. 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 I cried. <laughs> and then I started laughing at myself. I was there and I was like, <laughs> if you don't are you cry doing? in the gym, do you even lift? Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> I was crying, but then I cried so much as I watched myself, I started laughing at myself, and I was like, 
I'm just gonna get it done. <laughs> and I hit frosted and I think I smashed the PB then. And then I went off and I was like, Valerie, you can't be crying. You need to address what's really going on. And then it went into me addressing what was really on my mind. And yeah. then from there, the week, I think it was like three or four weeks later was when I had that really good week. Yeah. So it was like, okay, cool. It, I had to really break and get to that low to experience yeah. that really good I feel high. like that was your best moment though, not your worst. Cause you that know, was that's, that, that's that exactly, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. That you helped yeah. me. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. That, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Even though I would say that would be my, my worst moment, it was also like the point in which, okay, it all clicks now, you can't. I think I was still very much on oh, mental health, da, 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 da. but until that moment right there and then, when I realized that I'm carrying baggage in my head, which is why I can't lift this right. weight, and I, there's a big link between the two, yeah. that's when I started looking back at it and I was like, is there any sort of thing I could do which is more mental health based because now mm -hmm. I see the big link between the two. Mm -hmm. And now when it comes to lifting, it's so, it's so much more than just, oh, I'm just lifting this weight. It's, so, it's like, okay, I'm in a healthy space right now. I'm about to lift it. I feel good. This mm -hmm. is only gonna add to how happy I am. Da, 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 sort of thing. So yeah, even though it was the worst, it also led and is, could be the best One of well. the best, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that how you've linked lifting to your mental health as Big well. Time. Like Big time. Like how it's really helped you and having those moments when you are lifting, actually like I need to address something and something needs to Often you know, when I, I like when help. I step to the bar, sometimes I I G check myself with being mentally okay. It's like, Am I all right? like is is home good? Like are you good <laughs> at home? I love that. This barbell is like, what are you going on about? Just I literally me. feel like the barbell's asking me, have you eaten? Have you been sleeping? All right, cool, let's go. Sort of thing. Yeah. Because the bar will tell you that. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that dumbbell. It literally will. It really will. <laughs> so, Mayra, can you share with us your worst moment when lifting and also share with us your favourite kind of music you listen to? Sure. Um, so for me, my worst, my worst moment when lifting was kind of bittersweet because it was when I was still naive um, to the whole field of lifting and I thought that, you know, um, you know, I just had that really high level of self-expectation like I was talking about. Um, and it was the day I got my lifting belt because I wasn't working up to a PR and I decided that day I'm just going to max out. And I feel like self-comparison is one of my worst enemies because I've been watching other people on Instagram pull like 320s um, and like three, three wheels, that's, that's what we call it, for 140. And I was like, I want that. Um, and I thought this belt was the, the key to getting that. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I've got my belt. I got like the best outfit. I was so pumped. And then I walked into the gym and I was so anxious as well at the same time because I had that self-expectation -expe that that's what was going to happen when I got to the platform. So I got to the platform and I did my warm-ups and then some other people came over and this was pre-COVID times. So there's like a squat rack in front of you and they wanted to use that. So they're kind of already invading my space. And I already felt really, really um, anxious and nervous about this lift because I'd hyped myself up so much. I kind of fooled myself into believing it was going to happen. Um, and I remember I had it loaded and the previous warm-up did not go well. Um, and I had 120 loaded and I looked at the barbell just before I was going to do the lift and I was thinking in my head this isn't going to come up and as soon as I thought that I went down to pick it up and it was one of the worst lifts I had ever done ever because again like I said I was naive to it and I didn't realize that it takes so much time to get your technique right your hip hinge your glute engagement your lockout um, retracting your lats there's so many components to it to get the perfect lift and I thought it's just you know just going to whack this belt on and it's going to go up like like smooth as hell and it did not happen like that and because of that lift I like I injured myself but um and I was out for a couple of weeks actually because of that and I feel like it was bittersweet because it had a good memory attached to it but at the same time it humbled me and it made me realize that there's so much more to it and it's such a big process to get to that stage and I can happily look back now and think you know I'm doing 120 for sets now and they're comfortable reps and looking back at myself I was in a completely different mindset um, and that self-expectation is non-existent and I'm more in tune with my body and what I can do and I don't think that you know this is the magic tool for it you've got to put the work in to get yourself to the stage where you want to be. 
That's incredible. You're well pulling done. what way and you started when? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's really cool. And what music were you listening to at the time? Can you remember? Or what do you go to when you're lifting? You know when I've got a really heavy set, I need something fast. Um, yeah. So my guilty pleasure is actually like heavy metal. Um, <laughs> so I love that. It's an original favorite, power lift. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite song um, is Think, Think Fast by Crazy Town. It's got like this guitar oh. solo in it and I know the timing exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just like shuffle my feet yeah. around, play with my headphones, wait for the wait, you know, wait for the for the for the solo, and then grip the bar. Yeah, that bit of rock. Does anyone yeah. else listen to like any eighties rock when they're lifting? No, no I have. I'm for eighties rock. Eighties <laughs> rock. No, normally, that's my house. <laughs> I don't know what time it comes from, but it's been put on me. There's a guy in my gym who listens to rock heavy. So around about the time that I'm lifting is when he's got the ox cord. <laughs> and then all you hear is gah, gah, And I'm like, you know okay. what? I'm going to tune into this. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. And there's something about it, so I don't know embrace what I'm listening it. to. Yeah, yeah you got to embrace it. You yeah. hear like crazy stuff like, help me from the darkness. And I'm like, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, like, just fight or flight, it just gets your adrenaline going. Some you know, when there's like that build up and it's like, this is the crescendo, this is the moment it's happening. And it just makes you feel so powerful. Like, you know, everyone around you can hear the same song, but they can't really. Yeah. Really nice. <laughs> it definitely is Love words it. and music that can like get you to lift it. <laughs> Love that. So I thought we'd uh, talk a little bit about like the stigmas around the weights room. Obviously, we've chatted about like our good list, our bad list, a bit about music. Um, but I think definitely out there just from discussions we've had previously to do in this that there is still that element of the weight room is like the boys and some gyms if there's a girl in there it's like oh who's this in our space or how does that make you feel and how does it make you feel as like as a lifter do you feel like empowered from going in there did you have that feeling of oh I don't don't want to go in and um, we can like chat about this or I can go around individually Anyone want to so start? I'm, 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 I feel like we're yeah. order now. I know, we have yeah, got an order. Like, <laughs> We've got a program. <laughs> okay, yeah, Lucy. Exactly. Like. Yeah, I mean, the, the stigma is women in the weights. Yeah. Not, not even just actually, not even just women in the weights room, it's women who lift. Yeah. It is who lift because there's so many different forms of it. And I feel, I'd say three or four years ago when I first started getting into the gym, it was a lot worse. So I can say positively it has come on well however I don't think it's at the stage where enough women feel comfortable as we spoke about before women who lift are still a minority we are still a minority group because people don't feel comfortable women don't feel comfortable as as we, we've spoke about before it's imposter syndrome we, we don't we don't think we should be there I get that whole idea behind it where and I've been told this since I started lifting, oh, like, you look manly, you're this, yeah. you're that. I've Girl that. shouldn't have muscle. So with their thinking in their heads, okay, so I shouldn't have muscle because I'm a woman, mm. because I'm going to get called manly. They relate that to going to a gym or lifting weights. So they avoid it. They, mm. they don't do it because there's a stigma that you're going to look like a man. And that's just, that shouldn't be a thing. It's not, <laughs> you don't, <laughs> for yeah. one. You don't look like a man. But it's not, it, it's, it is possible to break this stigma down. It's just having that courage. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of women, they just need to have that ability to look past it. And it's, mm -hmm. that is so much easier said than done. I've been there, what, three or four years ago, hating it, not wanting to go, not wanting to go in the weight room because it's for, for boys, it's for men, it's not for me. But getting past that stage and getting to where I am now, I, can't, I couldn't see myself not lifting. It's so empowering. You feel so strong. You feel like literally mm -hmm. unstoppable. Not even just like in the gym, your confidence grows. Yep. It helps reduce anxiety, depression. It helps your mental health. It helps so many different areas of your life. Not just that you can pick up some iron. It helps you more than you will know. So it's, it's getting women used to the fact that there isn't a, don't tell yourself there's a stigma. Yeah. Like if, if people keep saying to themselves, but there is a stigma, we're not yeah. supposed to do it. Well, if you say that, you're going to believe you're gonna it. You're going to feel it. Put it out into the feel universe. It more. You, yeah. So it's like what you give out, you'll get back. So don't say it. Mm -hmm. don't, don't voice that there's a stigma. Just feel, okay, lifting empowers women. 
and thinking about the positives from that, like yeah. your, your relationships or <coughs> Precise, career, like yeah. what am I going to get back from doing these things rather than going in and going, everyone's looking at me. Mm. You can be like, right, I'm going to train my back so it's going to help my posture, which is going to make me look better exactly. in this dress, which is going to make me feel better at For work sure. or make me feel better right. at that Christmas party. I think changing that thought process around it as well. I think you took yeah. on some really nice stuff there. Has there ever been a moment where um, you kind of walked into that weight room and you were like, okay, it's full of boys, but I can do this. And then they were all like, oh my God, like she can live, she knows what yeah. she's doing. I think yeah, we've I all probably like had that. Still like, <laughs> it's still like a thing now. Like I, to be fair though, I train a lot of the time with Ben, mm -hmm. my boyfriend, big guy. Yeah. If he sees someone looking at me, I shit you not, he will literally just be like, <laughs> like stare at them like don't, like, don't you dare. But obviously like when I used to train on my own quite a lot, you can, I mean, there's mirrors everywhere in the gym, isn't there? And it does empower you because you've got a guy squatting. I'm, yeah, I'm same Equally weight there. as you. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and it's like, and I hope he doesn't look at me and think, oh, right, like, what's she doing? I hope she, yeah. I hope he looks at me and thinks, go on, girl, like yeah, you mm, can do this. You can do this. And I think that's an, that's a much nicer way to think of guys in the gym if you are worried mm -hmm. that maybe they're egging you on. Maybe they want you to do mm -hmm. well. Don't always think, oh, he's looking at me because because I'm lifting weights. Oh, he must think this. He's probably looking because he's thinking wow yeah. like she's so strong mm -hmm. and doesn't also always like, have to be negative sorry to jump in there yeah. <laughs> also like if you chat to some guys like i've had guys in the past be like i don't want to go in there because all you girls are there and it's way intimidating i can't do what you do so there's like there's that level yeah, of that as well sure. where women sometimes actually do intimidate the blokes as well which is in some ways as a woman like yeah that is empowering but it's how can we kind of connect the two yeah where everyone definitely feels welcome there anything that you could add to that um yeah i was just gonna say like what you um just said about how can we empower one another mm -hmm. and the only people we can blame for that is the system and the way we have been brought up that boys should be like this and girls should be like this mm -hmm. um and if I always say, if anyone has anything negative to say to you and like, or to me, I've had, I've had it all. And I just send them love and light because I'm just like, it's just your own insecurities. Yeah. Um, them. Yeah. It's and it, you can't, you can't, I try not to give negativity back to it um, because it is something they are going through. And it is hard for a man in, in this world now. Um, and I can only speak from England where men feel like they have to be more masculine in certain ways. They should be into fitness more. They um, should look like this. And, and for them, then suddenly see a woman who's empowering them, that's going to trigger something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And you can't, it's like, okay, so where, like, how can we change this? Mm -hmm. How can we change that um, it's okay for you to have your image? It's okay for you to be a skinny boy, a skinny girl, a fit girl, a fit boy, mm -hmm. um, or anything else what you are. Um, so I always speak up for, like, equality. Yeah. And that's not just inside a gym, but outside gym and treat people how you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I've, I've heard it all. And I heard something, when I realized how far I've come, um, it was when the gyms were open, I was working in a very popular gym and a PT there, he was feeling a way about himself um, that there was a member who was training with me who used to be his, his friend and he didn't like it. So he went in, why do you train with her? Why did you put up a video? why is this and the person was like listen like she's really good it really works blah 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 and because he wasn't hearing what he wanted to hear that basically what he wanted to hear was that person to destroy me because he was yeah. so he went yeah but who would that mm. and the person came back and told me and i was like do you know what if you told me that three years ago that would have destroyed, destroyed me yeah that would have made me go home thinking, why am I doing what am I do I'm doing mm -hmm. and all that thing. And I was like, that's just a reflection on himself because he unfortunately can't stand in his power right now because he hasn't done the mental work. Yeah. So to see a woman, a woman of colour, a woman who's heavily tatted and a woman who's so unapologetic for who I am, mm -hmm. that's a massive trigger. Um, and all you can do, all these people can do is the self-work and us to keep promoting what it's like to be a strong woman because yeah. that's what we are but talking about stigmas there's still stigmas not just between the boys and the girls but between race and religion mm -hmm. um so obviously i'm a black woman so i can only speak for what it's like to be a black woman and so many black women still feel like they can't step in the gym because yes they're a woman but they're black first 
and they feel so we live in a society where that is still a problem that is still a thing and they step into a gym and if you step into a gym in a city as a black woman you're still a huge minority mm. so she's stepping in to go and do weights and it's like are they looking at me because i'm black or are they looking at me because I'm doing weights? They're probably thinking she's doing 80 kilo snacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it does come down to that. Yeah. But when it, we got a, a, a world full of like all these problems mm. still, what we're all doing, all of us sat here doing an amazing job by trying to delete those stigmas. Yeah. Um, all we can do is just keep sharing our, our stories and empowering one another and uplifting. But yeah, stigma in the gym is still a thing. Um, but it's the way we approach it and try not to be angry mm -hmm. about it, but just understand. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really nice tip, like understanding. And also if someone's pushing something onto you, it may potentially be something right. that they're dealing with and that's fine. They might get there one day, they might not, but let them roll with it. You just be strong, empowering and yeah. do, do your thing. Yeah. yeah, definitely. How about you, Val? Um, definitely when it comes to stigmas, I am so big on talking about being a black woman in fitness mm -hmm. and lifting weights. And I feel like one thing that I've taken upon myself to do is the only way change is going to happen and we're going to remove ourselves of these stigmas is if you start moving in the opposite direction. And I feel like I've personally given myself the role of being an example because I feel like sometimes people need to be led mm, to feel like, OK, yeah. if I know you said much earlier, we'd spoken about, you know, a woman inspired you because you saw she was black and she was lifting a certain, you know, amount of weight and she was competing. And I want to be that person for as many people as I can be. So if I'm able to walk into the weight room, be unapologetic, walk in, lift my weights and feel no type of way about it. Mm -hmm. It's the people that you don't even realise are watching are the ones that you're inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. it's often been someone who's messaged me or approached me and been like, hi Valerie, um, I actually used to go to the gym that you used to work out, what, three years ago? Yeah. It's so like, yeah, and I've seen how far you've come and I just wanted to ask you, like, how are you so confident? It won't even be the things that I'm lifting where I'm buying my gym weights, how are you so confident? Mm -hmm. And that's not even something that I'm thinking about, but that's when it hit home, like, I'm actually doing that for people and I feel like one way I can personally do it is to be that person for people and be like, hey, it's happening, I can do it. Be who maybe, you needed. Exactly, be who I needed. Yeah. Exactly, be who I needed so that more people can look at me and surround myself with people who are like me so that we can all, you know, have that agreement to be like, guys, this is what we're doing for them, cool? And then I've got a little sister and I've got her, you know, speaking and conversating in that light and I'm slowly taking it away from her. That way she takes it to her friends and then it's a thing by where I don't need to feel like, oh, I'm a black woman in the in the gym lifting, ah, ah, ah. When I walk in, it's just, I want to lift some weight yeah, and I want to, to take <laughs> that burden <laughs> off mm -hmm. anyone and everyone that I possibly can. So working on those stigmas, speaking up about it and being that person for people that, you know, I never had is my number one way of doing it because it is a thing. And being in the, there was this one experience because you guys said, you know, when people look at you and they have this misconception, mm -hmm. there, there's been two times. The first time was, when I was in my first gym and I was leaving, um, I taught this really massive class and people were coming and saying, you know, goodbye, all the best with your new job and all that type of stuff. One lady came to me and she was like, I can't lie to you, this is the first time I've done your classes and I wish I did them more. I generally didn't think your classes would be good because you're so young and so small and so back. And I was like, oh, okay. And it's that misconception because you think a certain type of way. I want to just break all of those things yeah. and take it away from me because now I've changed that perception. How many more perceptions yeah, can exactly. I Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How, which is why I went deep in it and I went to the city and I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to throw myself into it yeah. and really change the minds of people. And another experience I had was, you know, lifting that heavy weight and then men were kind of coming around and doing that. <laughs> yeah. And they're doing that and I was like, I'm holding the weight. And I think it was like, this was a point when I was coming like really lifting 100. I was lifting 100 kg with ease. So I'm lifting it and I'm seeing someone trying to spot me and I was looking behind and I was like, and I moved forward with it and he was like, <laughs> and I was We've like, all had that experience. And I like, you can take your plates off as well. I'm like, and, and they start helping me. Oh I can get it. Oh, <laughs> and, exactly. and then a lot of them were coming up to me like, oh, hi, darling, do you need help with that? Are you, are you good? Like, and I think it's when I was racking it up, and it was like 60 kg that I was putting on. I was putting two, um, a 20 on. They're like, do you need help? I was like, babe, but this is this is this yeah. is the warm up. This is the warm up. Yeah. And then as I started going there, because it was, I worked in a city gym, but this one was closer to home. So on the weekend, I'd go there. They started realizing 
as in like what I was about and I was like, I don't need no help. They'd come up to me and be like, can we get a session in? Cause like, you're so consistent. And you know, I feel like you'd motivate me. I'd be like, what about the other six guys that you came in with? Like, nah, nah, you're, you're, you're doing something. It's like, oh, cool. If I know that I'm in that space and I can make you feel like that, when I'm in other spaces, people might not be voicing it, but I'm going to choose to think that that's what they're thinking instead of, oh, they're watching me. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. and I just want to spread that mentality as well as you're inspiring someone by just being, walk, by walking yeah. in and just doing your thing, to be fair. So, yeah. You have no idea who you're inspiring. No like, idea. You no, well. idea. Yeah. no idea. No idea. hmm And how about yourself, Mayma? I feel like for me, um, there's always that stereotype of women in the gym anyway, that you're going to be doing light stuff. But as a Muslim woman, to walk into the gym with a headscarf on in a place where you are literally probably never even seen, it is the most terrifying thing mm. ever. And then to, to stand on a place that is so open and so bold, I feel like f at first it really did make me feel anxious and it kind of triggered me to have, you know, that, that issue of self-consciousness and being nervous about being around people. But then now I feel like it's kind of flipped for me. So it's kind of a more, yeah, I'm wearing a hijab. Yeah, I'm deadlifting. Yeah, I'm gonna deadlift and do it with perfect form, four reps in front of your eyes. Like this is real life, this <laughs> is gonna happen right now. Yeah, you know, like it's, it's flipped completely for me. It's something that's actually given me more confidence um, to be able to like prove myself and to prove to, to myself as well that I can work just as hard as everyone else. Um, and I feel like it's always, it's always that, you know, what if they think this? What if they think that? I know I've, I've had so many comments. Um, and I had one the other day, actually, about um, someone saying, oh, I see the use with um, Taekwondo and self-defense, but what's the use in lifting heavy weights? Mm. I'm like, why does something need to have a purpose? If I enjoy it, just let me live. Yeah. If I like deadlifting, even though, you know, just let, me, just let me enjoy it because it's what I like to do. Um, and I feel like from an outsider, it's so easy for them to chip in and try and say something to try and put you down. But when you realise yourself how many hours of work you've put in, how many trials and tribulations you've gone through to get yourself to this point mentally and physically, you know that something's paid off. And mentally, you just you just brush it off now. Yeah. I know if someone said that to me when I first started, I probably would have quit. Um, and I know, like, I get comments as well saying, "Oh, you need to be careful," or you know, you should be lifting that kind of weight. I'm like, my mum. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <mom's laughs> <so. laughs> like, they wouldn't say that to like a male Olympic lifter. They wouldn't say that to someone like Eddie Hall or Brian Shaw or a strong man, would they? So why are you saying it to me? I know, like. It's just it's, their ignorance, yeah, isn't it? the ignorance, yeah, and it's the threat of being stronger than a man or being so somewhere so bold and making such a statement that threatens them, and I feel like they feel belittled by it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel like we need to change that and empower each other because I know that there's there's men out there as well that feel like you know they're too new to go to the gym or they don't know much about it, and all their friends are like big and swell, especially girls as well. Um, but it's like everyone starts somewhere. You're not always going to start at the same point. Everyone's at different places in their journey. And it's about respecting each other and being able to make the gym such an open and welcome space for everyone. And looking at everyone and respecting the hustle, like looking at someone at 6 a.m. in the morning. And, you know, you're both there for the same reason. You just want to you just want to put in the work and you're there to work hard. Um, I feel like you really, we really need to like flip the whole view of women in the gym and people in the gym in general. Um, it's you that people in the gym in general, yeah. Yeah. yeah, empowering women here. Yeah. Like, just <laughs> like literally people. everyone, like it's a space for everyone. And you know the whole thing about women being too bulky, and you know men have to be really strong, or men have to you know have the biggest dumbbells, and the women have to have the lightest one. Why can't anyone just do what they want? Like you don't need to comment on everything. Just. Just let everyone live, you know. Regardless, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's a space for he, she, or them. Yeah, yeah. everyone's welcome. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And touching on the whole thing of, you know. It, it's not for everyone to look a certain type of way yeah. and to be a certain type of person. You don't need to end up sitting here one day and having this conversation yeah. for you to lift, as we've spoken about, you know, with the mental aspect and all I ever preach to the people that I interact with is that gift of that mental aspect and the whole feeling of working on yourself for your health, for you know your physical health, your mental, your mental well-being. I'm not telling you that you need to be lifting 120 kg and you need to be this amazing lifter mm. with an Instagram and yeah. all that type of stuff. Mm. It's for yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you just take it back to, it's for me, it's for my you know, self. 
And as a woman, when you step in there, it's not to show anything to anyone. Mm -hmm. It's about being okay. And I think that's been, I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be a personal trainer because I think I got that very quickly and I wanted to spread that into women specifically, yeah. which is why I was, um, I worked in a women's only gym for a while. Cause I was like, I need to just inflict this mentality into yeah. you guys that it's not about anything else external it's about you and the moment even if it's two kg dumbbells and you're moving and you feel better for yeah. it that is it so remove all those thoughts just for you yeah. at if all that times works for you then you got it exactly <laughs> yeah those two exactly kg, yeah. those two kgs work for you go for it but then equally if you want to be pumping 24s on your chest go Let's do, do it. that as well yeah. <laughs> go for it what makes you happy yeah. yeah, don't put a limit to what, is, what you can do as a person. Don't put a cup on yourself. Yeah. Don't try and fit into any type of stereotype. Just do what you want, how you want for yourself, and that's it. And ask for help if you need it. Yeah. yeah. You've got yeah. great that's coaches there if you need it. That, that is it. important. Very, very <laughs> important. It can feel very intrusive. I yeah. don't think a guy would mean to do that in a horrible way. I think they're probably coming from a good place, and that is fine. Yeah. I think, though, as a woman, if we needed help, we'd just ask. Yeah. We'd just say, same as a guy, if a guy needed help, he would ask. ask. We would do the same, we would ask. So it, that's quite a weird one. It can come across like one of two ways. Great ladies, that was a, a nice one to finish on. But I do want to move on to some quick fire question round. All right, you're going to get two each. They're total random as well. So Lucy, you can only do one lift for the rest of your life. What is it and why? <laughs> it's a deadlift. I would say hip thrust, but then we're only hitting the glutes. Deadlift, we're hitting head to toe. Love that, that's a good one. Good bit of advice there as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, um, Wiley, what song is always on your playlist, your lifting playlist? Yeah, Love Yours by J. Cole. There we go, we had that <laughs> one earlier. <laughs> okay, Val, do you have any PB rituals? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if it's a dance, like, do it. <laughs> if I'm going in for a PB, I have to, it has to be that song, Future, um, Last Breath. And I have to, like, we spoke about that lifting sort of thing. I think I need to have something that's had peanut butter in it, like a peanut butter biscuit or some sort. I just need that peanut butter taste. I don't know why. I don't know why. Or avocado. I'm not fussy. Either or. Like, one, it needs to be in my system. And I need to, like, beforehand, I need to sit there and kind of listen to the music for, like, a good 20 minutes and just warm myself up. And I picture myself doing it over and over again. And then when I walk there and I stomp there, set it up and then when I'm get, getting ready to it, my feet in the ground and I do like this little tingling thing. And then when I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Super dramatic, yeah, yeah. I love so that. So I just dramatic. want to watch you Wait, train. It has, to, it has to be done in that way and I need to eat what I need to eat. I can't do it if I don't eat my peanut butter or my avocado, I can't. <laughs> I have to do it in that way. But yeah, it's the, it's the little tingly fingers. People laugh, I'm like, I have to do it again now. I have to do it again, because you laughed, but I have to. Can you do that video and put that on Instagram for us? <laughs> <laughs> so we can all see it. if you want. Because <laughs> I do it all the time. But yeah, I have to do that little. <laughs> all right, my bar. So, three pieces of equipment you cannot live without. Liquid chalk. I don't know if this counts as one, but pre-workout. Yeah, we can go. Before there. a good lifting session, a good dry scoop. Um, <laughs> and dry. dry it's so yeah. yeah. the powder. Yeah. The good dry oh, scoop. Oh, God. Yeah. God. It's the best way. Um, and my belt. Belt. Love that. <laughs> okay, Lucy, dumbbells or barbells? Barbell. Standard. Yeah. Love it. You know what? <laughs> Lift, you can get heavy, can't you? Yeah. Good answer. Train, training with people or on your own? I feel like I know the answer already. <laughs> Power lifter, Olympic lifter, leave me alone. Yeah, on my own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little hermit, yeah. Yeah, on your own. <laughs> <Love> that. <laughs> um, okay, Val, is there anything worse than forgetting your headphones? Oh. No. No. <laughs> no. You're like, no, no, no. Definitely not. No. If, I, if I have to hear the gym's music, there's been times when I've realised I've oh. not got them and I've thought, oh, well, I've left. I'm going home. Yeah. 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 I've turned I around, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I need my headphones. If it's bad music and you can't hear it. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. Okay, Mayma, who inspires you? Big one. Myself. Ooh. Yeah. I feel like that. I am my own inspiration because when you think of where you are now to where you began, it's just such a, per it's so content to see like how far you've come. That's really cool. 
Okay, so we're all going to answer this, or you, you guys are. <laughs> um, one piece of advice you give for, to new lifters? I think straight away from the very start, you have to remember you're doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it for anyone else. No, nobody else is doing what your goals are. That's or paying you. That's for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, that simple as you, you are genuinely doing it for yourself, and you've got to think that every time you go in and lift. Yeah, mine is embrace and enjoy every moment. Yeah, yeah that's that. cool. Wow. Mine would be to ask for help when you need help and don't be afraid to not know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that I was really good at doing, just being like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. I need help. I need to learn, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, we're all learning. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> never stop learning. <laughs> Mayma? Never expect too much of yourself. Because yeah. I feel like when when obviously on social media as well, when you compare yourself to people that have been in the game for years and you're just starting out, you're never going to immediately start off where they are now. It's literally impossible. You need to know that it's a long learning process. Mm -hmm. And don't be disappointed in that either because learning and you know, growing is part of the journey. It's part of your growth and it's something that you should embrace and enjoy. Yeah, that's really cool because you have no idea what people have done under yeah. that iceberg to get to where they are now and also not relying on that belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, thank you for having coming us. In. And thank you to everybody else for listening. And we hope that we may have helped you with a few bits and bobs and some few areas around lifting. And we hope to do this again one time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. This is lifting.